To understand the attraction of a Camp Hope and its 623 residents, we have to understand the two most common denominators of homelessness. Loss of community, such as family, friends, church, or any other support network, and deep personal trauma. A homeless camp like Camp Hope is the tangible embodiment of deeply traumatized individuals coming together to find community and a safe place to exist. Many are fighting hopelessness, seeing no clear exit ramp out. Some are fighting addiction and substance abuse, no secret there. Others have untreated mental health challenges. Some have jobs, others don't. Some simply can't. But all are dealing with personal trauma and all are looking for meaningful community, even if that community is dysfunctional by any definition you and I might understand. Any plan to meaningfully address homelessness, whether under a bridge, in an alley, or in a massive homeless camp like Camp Hope, must address the deep personal trauma that brought people to this point in their lives and offer them a path forward to rebuild a meaningful sense of community. Failure to do so is planning to fail. Julie Garcia is the founder and executive director of Jules Helping Hands, one of the primary organizers of Camp Hope and a strong advocate for homeless service alternatives to large congregate shelters. I asked Julie to talk with me about why homeless camps have become such a significant issue recently. Well, first, the increase in homelessness has caused encampments to be the more used form of sleeping arrangements for people experiencing homelessness. Congregate shelters have always been our option throughout the United States, including Spokane, and the cat's pretty much out of the bag. People experiencing homelessness no longer want to be forced into congregate shelters. They, they don't work. They warehouse people, but they don't actually exit people out of homelessness. We don't have the services or service providers or housing stock to actually exit these folks out. And when we focus solely on congregate shelters, the problem that happens is there's no one-on-one -on -one care because most of the day and the shelter provider is spent putting out one crisis after another, trying to get 100 to 300 people with severe trauma to coexist in the same building with minimal services and nothing to do. You are constantly putting out fires, trying to just keep them calm enough to stay together. And that's the problem with these big shelters is we warehouse, let's just go with an in-between number, 150 people in one building. And those services are minimal, so it's mats on the floor. There's not a lot of things to do and not an ideal space. So you're asking 150 people to behave, for lack of a better word, in one room together with 150 of their closest friends or enemies. We don't talk to affected people. There's not affected people in the decision-making process for how we help homelessness. It's made by people who, one, probably have never experienced homelessness or experienced it 20 years ago when the circumstances had changed. The peer support, that's why peer support is important, but we don't have enough peer support going into shelter, congregate shelters to be able to exit people out of homelessness. We spend the days just maintaining.